Hey everybody, Rose Matter here, and welcome to part 7 of my Umaneko Let's Play of... Oh boy, that last episode, though. Wow, was not expecting that with almost half the people on the um, island just wiped out in one go. And now, of course, the question is, who did it? You know, was it Beatrice? Was it the witch? Was it one of the people still left alive? This is where I imagine we're going to get into, like, actually trying to solve the mystery. But I guess the matter is, are we going to figure that out in this chapter? Or are we going to have to wait all the way until the end? I don't think I could take having to wait that long to get an answer, but I am so hyped to see what happens next. So I hope you guys are excited too. So without further ado, let's get into the story once again. All that could be heard was the sound of the rain, the voices from the kids' television program that Mario was watching, and the engrossed Mario's cackling voice. In other words, what greeted them as they returned dumbfounded from that horrible, bizarre scene was the voice of Mario as she rolled around laughing at the television. Not knowing how to explain to Mario that her mother Rosa was dead, those who returned to the room couldn't manage any more than a suffocating silence. Alright, before I go any further... Let's go ahead into and see if there's any updates on the character profiles. Ah, look at that. Okay. Nice. All right. So this is something I'm definitely going to have to be sure that I come back to as things go on because it will probably give me tips. All right. Kraus, corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. The direct cause of death is unknown, but it seems the side of his head was smashed after his death. We start where it all begins. So no update on that so far. Okay. Man, oh man, it's just crazy to see almost half of them already dead. Corpse found inside Rose Garden. His face, his face seems to have been smashed after his death. He has the right to lament his ill fortune. Kyrie, corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. Her face seems to have been smashed after her death. She was chosen by the demon's roulette. That's all there is to it. Corpse found inside the Rose Garden storehouse. Her face seems to have been smashed after her death. I'll be seeing her again, so I'm not lonely. Oh, okay, that's... Hmm, hers is a little bit strange. It almost sounds like that's Maria who's talking. Like, I'll be seeing her again, so I'm not lonely. Like, the other ones sound so disconnected. Being like, uh, well, you know, it was the fate of things and that's all there is to it. But with, with Rosa, it seems a little bit more personal. Shannon, corpse found inside Rose Garden Storehouse. The side of her head was smashed after her death. Don't worry, everyone will be revived in the Golden Land. And Gota, the only one that nobody cares about. Everybody was lamenting everybody else's death, but nobody said anything about Gota because nobody likes him. How unfortunate. Apparently, he was actually supposed to be on duty in the guest house. Aha, uh -huh. so if he hadn't skirted his, uh, well, I guess Shannon died anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh yeah, I guess the last moment, right? Like, he got switched over to the, uh, the main mansion, but I mean, Shannon, poor Shannon, only because he, uh, she was asked to help go to the, did she end up dying? So that's unfortunate for Shannon. Okay, definitely need to remember that. Let me just check really quick about tips as well. Okay, so there's the letter and the epitaph. And sorry, um, I just want to see if anybody else's profiles have changed as well. Okay, I probably read this already, but born with a weak bronchi and sometimes assailed by sudden asthma attacks. I probably read this before, but it's good to bring that up because that has to come back at some point. And Kumasawa, silent during all this. Shrewd, saying about how she is shrewd. Maybe she's got something to do with this. I almost forgot, like when I was going through at the end about like all the people that were still alive, I forgot about her. So she might be one to keep an eye out for. Maybe Nanjo as well. Although Nanjo seems like a good dude, so I don't want to distrust him. Okay, let's get back to the story. Sorry about that, but that is good to know that as things happen, it's almost going to give me like little tips about where people's bodies were found, cause of death, all that stuff. At first, Maria returned their stares with a dubious look. 
but when she realized they weren't trying to blame her for anything, she ignored them and again immersed herself in the television program. The children wordlessly sat down on the sofa. Their minds were probably blank from their state of shock. Though while they had all cried and mourned so much, now they just vaguely sat there, their faces expressionless. Only Cannon had returned to his usual calm expression. However, that probably didn't mean he hadn't been able to wipe out the shock. Nothing was reflected in his eyes as he stared into the emptiness. Hideyoshi fidgeting as he remembered that horrible scene kept muttering. Unbelievable. That can't be something of this world. It's the work of the devil. Every once in a while when he turned, uh, he turned these into questions and bounced them off Nanjo. But Nanjo, in a calm, doctorly manner, kept repeating that nothing could be understood by only glancing at the scene, and that until the police arrived, he wouldn't know anything. However, Nanjo only appeared calm by comparison to Hideyoshi, who could not contain his agitation and fear. In fact, Nanjo had also received a, f a huge shock, and his face was deathly pale. Maybe it was because of their attitudes that Natsui tried to rise to the challenge and take control. Natsui was apparently unchanged from her normal attitude, and she briskly gave directions. Immediately trying to, like knowing that Natsu doesn't really have much power with Kraus gone, she is like taking charge and she's like, I'm gonna be the new head of the family, I'm second in line. Natsui was struck speechless by Ava's aggressive actions in a situation like this. It seemed that she was claiming that, with Kraus dead, the one to take responsibility should not be his wife, but herself, the next highly ranked in the family. Possibly, she was not happy that Natsui was ignoring her and handling matters herself in this extreme situation. Girl, like, her, her husband just died. You're the only one who still has their partner left, like, damn. Of course, even Ava's mind had been blank from the shock until just now. She only returned to herself after Natsui started giving orders. <sighs> Natsui walked out without saying anything more. Ava followed behind her. Mere moments after they left, Kuwasawa ran into the parlor. Since she wasn't the kind of person to run around, it would be normal to sense that something had happened. But since everyone had been stricken by that earlier shock, none of them took any notice of this trivial difference. Oh, what now? Did she just learn about this? It seems weird because, like, Kubasawa seems to be the one who, like, knows all the stuff going on around here. Unless she found something else, which is, like, just what we need right now. Oh no. Everyone in the parlor turned to listen. Everyone thought the same thing. I hope I misheard that. Just like how any container has a limit to how much you can put in it, no one felt like they could accept any more tragedies beyond what had already happened. So they all thought it. I hope I misheard that. <laughs> the first to start running was George. His harsh footsteps jogged Hideyoshi and Nanjo to their senses and they chased after him. Badler and the others followed. They flew into the dining hall one after another, but they didn't find any change that would have caused Kumasawa to go pale. To those who had viewed that gruesome scene at the storehouse, it was a bit of an anticlimax. However, Kumasawa, who followed them, pointed it out. There really were some traces of blood on the floor. Compared to that terrible scene, it was not very dramatic. However, if you calmly thought about it, this definitely indicated the loss of a lot of blood. ここにも血だまりがあるよ。これは一体。うん。だいぶ時間が経っているように見えますが、おそらく夕べ。ここで殺されたんだと見ていいでしょう。そ、そういうことになるんやろな。わしらは夕べずっと食堂で話し合いを
父さんたちが打ち合わせを抜けて休んだのは何時だっけうん昨夜の24時を少し過ぎたくらいの頃やだからその後にと考えるがだとやな It seems like I don't want Ava I could see maybe more likely to do something like this Hideyoshi Unless he's really good at hiding his like evil side like he seems like a pretty good dude、uh, It is sus that of everybody They're the only couple who managed to like make it out alive. And,、uh, you know, like everybody else at least lost someone, if not like both partners, you know, like Rosa and then Kraus and、um, Rudolph and Kyrie. It's just so weird. I'm just thinking, like, if Ava were to do it, you think Natsui would be the person that she'd be going after too. But maybe that,、uh, that charm. That she put on the door actually did protect her in some weird way. Or maybe Ava knew. Look at me already thinking about who could be the murderer. I'm just thinking it's weird that they left early, right? While everybody stayed up and talked, and then they made it out alive. But, like, Ava, if she were to murder, like, she probably wouldn't have a need to murder Natsumi because she's like, well, she has no stake in power. Like, there's no way that she's going to. You know, get that power, so I don't have to worry about her. But it seems a little obvious if it was one of these guys, so I'm going to hold off on that for now. But it is a little suspicious that Hideyoshi and Ava were the first to go to bed, and of course, they were fine. さっきの倉庫でこの世の地獄ってやつを拝んじまったから今さらこのくらいじゃ答えねえぜそうかよよかったな私は頭がどうにかなっちまいそうだぜここは食堂だぜ私は毎日ここで食事をして学校のことをぼやいたり、oh, yeah. Jessica, like, 宿題のことをぼやいたり This is our home Yeah, that's true 親父に学校の成績の話をされたり、It does have to feel like such a violation to, you know, where her safe place is. お嬢様、これ以上、ここにいるのはよくありません。百万円戻りましょう。俺も同感さ。秀吉正治さん、この部屋は多分、警察にとって重要な意味があると思います。俺たちが踏み荒らしちまうのは、まずいんじゃないですか。Badler proposed this in a slightly powerful voice as, together with Kanan, he grabbed the pail and shaking Jessica's shoulders. Batra san no yu tori desu na. Kono hea ni kore ijo, honon de itsuzukeru koto wa arimasu mae. Nanjo spoke while looking at the pale faces all around. Even though that horrible scene in the storehouse had felt like something not of this world, at least it was in a place far from here. A place we had been able to cut ourselves off and run away from. Which had helped everyone to keep on going. However, this dining hall was different. It was in the mansion's main wing, and as Jessica had said, it was supposed to be one of the more relaxing places within the mansion. It was the same place where all the relatives had enjoyed lunch and dinner yesterday. The shock of seeing this place smeared with blood reminded us of that horrible spectacle in the storehouse, and forced us to accept that we really hadn't been able to run away from the scene of that tragedy. Hmm. わしも同感やこの部屋には犯人の痕跡が残ってるかもわからんしな素人のわしらがかき回すべきとちゃうではよ出るんやはよはよ Hideyoshi also understood the meaning of what Badler had said and pushed everyone to hurry out of the dining hall The way we were then looking at that blood any longer would have been too harsh Nobody went against his words Everyone raised each other out of the dining hall Almost as though the last person in the room would be trapped in there all alone. Once in the hallway, we lent a shoulder to Kumasawa, who was leaning against the wall still trembling, and we all headed back to the parlor together. Then Genji returned. Oh, Genji san. I bet the,、uh, the radio is probably out as well, so the cops can't get here when we're trapped with a murderer. The cops can't get here when we're trapped with a murderer. それが申し訳ございません無線機の故障か
それ以外の理由によるものかわかりませんがなんや警察に連絡がつかんのか電話も無線もどっちもダメなんか申し訳ございません月曜の朝に船が来ることになっていますのでその船の通信機を借りることができると思います At this point, I feel like I would be taking a chance, like knowing the whole thing about that epitaph and you know, all the murders and everything that need to happen in order to win this game. And I'd be like, fuck the storm, I'm gonna take my chances. If there is like a paddle boat or something, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try and get back to land and get out of here. Yeah, Hideyoshi, exactly, yeah. ニジマの警察署まで直くら行ってくることはできんのかあ、こそ、そんなアホな話があるかロフにも死んだやでそして電話も無線も通じず船もない台風が過ぎて船が来るまでつまり明日の朝まで私らは警察にも連絡できずこの島に俺っちゅうことなんかってことはつまり俺たちだけじゃなく叔父さんたちを
保守点検はさせているはずなのですが。Maybe Kinzo did something to it because he figured like if this is gonna happen, he doesn't want it to be interrupted by the police. ほら、光をチカチカさせるみたいな船舶信号ってあるじゃない。そういうので向こうの島に連絡することはできないのかしら。そのような設備はございません。申し訳ございません。Just then, Kumasawa came pushing a serving cart loaded with breakfast. Since there was no way we'd be able to eat in the dining hall, Hideyoshi had ordered her to bring it to the parlor. はい。On several occasions, has led to a huge uproar throughout the house. He usually comes back as soon as he gets hungry. Usually. Bum, bum, bum. Where did he go? I was surprised. Natsui looked at Genji and Kanan as she said this. She probably thought the servants permitted the one winged eagle, who served directly under him, would know of a place he might go. However, it seemed to be the other way around. Their faces made it clear that those who knew Kinzo best realized even more than everybody else how impossible it was for him to leave his room. ご不浄まで全てを設けさせました親方様があの部屋をお出になることなどよっぽどのことがない限りとなるとなんやそのよっぽどのことがあったって考えるのが自然だっちゅうことになるんかまだそうと決まったわけではありませんとにかく気まぐれな方ですから。現状をご存知なくお一人で散歩をされている可能性もあります仮にそうだとしたら一刻も早く現状をお知らせしてご指示を仰がねばなりませんそうね考えたくはないけどお父様の身に何かあったのかもしれないしね like, そのような不吉なことは考えたくもありません。No one had seen Kinzo since the six horrible corpses had been found. On top of that, the phones were broken, the radio wouldn't reach anyone, and there was no way to contact the police. It looked like the typhoon would leave tomorrow and a boat would come. But until then, no one could rely on anyone outside the island, nor could they escape the island. Everyone had lost their composure at the extremely sudden tragedy. Man, this seems like. For as long as this game is, this seems like it's already happening. Like, things are progressing pretty quickly. Maybe it's similar to Higurashi, where each chapter is maybe something different, like a different timeline. Or maybe Monday comes and the typhoon doesn't let up, or a boat doesn't show up and it just progresses longer. Like, I don't know. It just seems like, wow, like the fact that almost half the cast is already dead and we're not even maybe halfway past the first chapter. A heavy silence and a sense of impatience. Even though they needed to do something, they couldn't think of anything. Some of them became irritated while others merely held their heads in their hands. But not one of them could explain what was occurring on this island of Rokunjima. After that, we sat in the parlor and wordlessly chewed through the breakfast that Kumasawa san had made. Of course, this was right after something like this had happened. No one had any appetite. However, we realized that not eating would weaken our bodies. It would also be rude to Kumasawa san, who made the breakfast. 
Kumasawa-san had taken the tasteful western vegetables, ones that Godasan had probably special ordered for the purpose of some extravagantly fancy dish, and cooked them in a Japanese style, making them turn into an unpleasant color. As to what Godasan had been planning to cook with those ingredients, right then, I couldn't even imagine it. <laughs> all they think about in terms of Goda is being like, man, I wish I was eating his food right now. Like, that's all people care about. If I did think about it, I'd be reminded of the way Godasan had died. And the inside of my mouth would be filled with a sour taste. For the time being, everyone pretended to eat, but there was no hope of anyone making any headway into the meal. Then everyone who was brought up to speed on the uh, then everybody was brought up to speed on the current situation. First off, that Uncle Kraus, my dad, Kyrie-san, Auntie Rosa, Goda-san, and Shannon-chan had been found in the Rose Garden storehouse as cruelly mutilated corpses and that despite that, we were unable to use phones or radio and still couldn't contact the police. So until the typhoon passed, there was nothing we could do. Furthermore, Grandfather, who we had hoped might be able to show a little leadership in this kind of situation, had disappeared at some point. Godasan hadn't made breakfast, so Grandfather's stomach must have been empty. And if he had just been taking a casual walk, by now he should have been stomping back to whine about how hungry he was. And yet, he hadn't appeared. There was more than a small chance he'd become caught up in the earlier crime. Et Natsui and Ate Eva had said that, on their return trip from going to see Kinzo, they had called out to him on every floor looking for him, but were not able to find him. If you think about the timing of it all, it was probably best to think that he had been caught up in the crime. If the culprit had taken the trouble to move the bodies of Dad and the rest, who we figured had been killed in the dining hall all the way to the storehouse, Maybe they had already killed Grandfather, moved his body to some strange location, but we simply had not found it yet. So we have to think, when was the last time uh, he was seen by somebody alive? No one actually said it, but this theory seemed extremely convincing. ここで子供たちと一緒にいてください。南条先生も。わかりました。ここで子供たちと一緒にいてください。南条先生も。わかりました。ここでお待ちしています。At Natsui led the servants, Genji-san, Kumasawa-san, and Kanan-kun out of the parlor. All that was left was Auntie Eva, Uncle Hideyoshi, Dr. Nanjo, and the four of us children for a total of seven people. みんなで仲良くテレビでも見て待ってよな。しかし。Uncle Hideyoshi tried to stir up this gloomy atmosphere, acting cheerful. Uh, cheerful. <laughs> With how attached Mari is to her mother, I had a feeling she wasn't going to be too broken up, because at this point she's like, oh, the witch is going to be revived, so everybody is just sacrifices at this point, so I don't care. But, man, like, she just... She acted like she already knew her mom was dead, and yeah, she just doesn't give a shit. Oh, so ka. Maria chan wa telebi miru ka? Ja, oji san to issho ni miyo na? Maria was the only one who played along. Even though Maria had been told of her mother's death, she didn't show the slightest flicker in her emotions. Was Nine really this young an age? And yet, she gets so upset over minor things, but hearing that her mom is dead, nothing. No one else was feeling the slightest bit like joining in, and they each sank into their sofas and let their minds go blank. Aw, George and Iki didn't answer, but he hung his head and closed both of his eyes. There could be no clearer response. よせよ、パトラ。少しは察しろよ。だな。悪いことを聞いたぜ。そうさ。僕だよ。彼女に夕べ、求婚したんだ。その時、指輪を渡した。明日になったら、それを好きな指にはめて返事としてくれって。and that ring had been on the ring finger of Shen and Chan's left hand. But this 
シャドウに相談を受けてたぜ。ジョージ兄さんのことでさ。なんて言ってたのかな。シャノンは嘘をつくのが下手だったからよ。ジョージ兄さんのことを言ってるのはすぐにバレバレでさ。自分は使用人の身分だけど、親しくしてもいいのだろうかとか。男の人の好きそうなものは何かとかどういう服を着たら喜ぶかとかそんなことをいろいろとさなんつうのかそのバトラ君、そっとしてあげなさい。After those words from Auntie Ava, Auntie Ava, I stopped talking to him. Misplaced words of comfort might actually hurt him. Jessica sat down next to Aniki and quietly put an arm around him. Maybe only Jessica, who had known about Aniki and Shannon's love since the beginning, and who had been discussing that relationship with Shannon, could comfort Aniki now. I went over to Auntie Ava and sat down on the opposite sofa. バトラ君は強いわね。もうだいぶしっかりしているように見えるわよまあそのほら愛の深さが傷の深さじゃないっすか俺は別にあんなクソ親父同士の方が知ったことじゃないし桐江さんは気の毒ですがまあ本当の親ってわけじゃないですしねあおバッドラー You're trying to be strong You were crying over them As much as everybody else あらという割にはさっきすっごくお泣きしてたわよ。Maybe he's like, George is supposed to be the strong one, but he's having a moment right now, so I need to be the strong one. まあ、育ての親に対する恩は、あのくらい泣けば OK かと思いまして。<笑><笑>そのあたりの切り替えの速さやドライなあたりは、本当にルドルフ譲りね。あの子は昔から、激しく喜んだり悲しんだり怒ったりしたけれどすぐにケロリと平静を取り戻したわ<笑>そんなことはないっすよ俺だってまだまだ心の職から立ち直れちゃいませんただ俺がみんなと違うのはそれによってどういう感情が生み出されるかってことだと思いますどういうこと
Oh, this is oddly jazzy. I was acting much calmer than George, Aniki, and Jessica were. Uh, and then the the name of the t uh, suspicion. Okay, so now we're getting to maybe he's starting to like go into. Okay, what? Let's think about this here about what's happened. That wasn't because my sadness was less intense, and I'd already sprung back to normal. It was because my sadness had been gradually replaced by a different emotion. Yeah, he's he's going into like investigation mode. I know the assumption is whenever, you know, someone is a killer, we assume it's a man, but... That was what I really wanted to do. It was like I couldn't allow myself to just sit here, overwhelmed with sadness and hugging my knees. これだけの上等を決めてくれやがったやろうは I felt like I'd had a very similar conversation with Kiri-san the night before. That's right. After the letter from the person who claimed to be Beatrice appeared at the dinner table last night. We had talked about whether or not a 19th person existed. エヴァボさん、この殺人、昨夜のベアトリーチの手紙と何か関連があるんでしょうかね。本当にベアトリーチなんて魔女がマリアに渡したんすかね。まさか。全部お父様の仕組んだ茶番でしょ。俺たち Kiriasan had denied that there was a 19th person by flipping over the chessboard. Even though Auntie Ava hadn't constructed an argument that complicated, her opinion at least was the same. Except that if that was the case, our situation starts to look very ugly. At the time of Beatrice's letter, we were able to dismiss the matter as just someone's prank. However, if we deny the existence of a 19th person at this point, Matters are not so jovial. In other words, Auntie Ava smiled meaningfully. It looked like Auntie thought this was the con that this conclusion should have been obvious from the very beginning. She's gonna say it's somebody who had the key. So she's probably gonna be like, it's gotta be one of the servants. あのシャッターは常に閉められていて、施錠されていたそうよ。つまり、倉庫内に運び込むにはシャッターの施錠を開ける必要があった。わかる。たまたまその日。シャッターが開けっぱなしになってた可能性は。
どこに何がかけてあるのかわからなかった犯人はその中から倉庫の鍵を見事選び出したのよしかも札も何もついていない鍵を手にしてバラ庭園裏にある倉庫の鍵だと理解したついでに言うと倉庫の場所すら理解していたもっとはっきり断言するわ犯人は使用人室の内部にも熟知している Her argument was extremely plain and clear. If the bodies had been thrown somewhere in the bushes of the rose garden, no explanation would have been necessary. However, the one key to the storehouse was in the servant room, and stored with a large group of other keys, such that a novice would not be able to tell them apart. This meant that the culprit was someone who was used to going in and out of the servant room and knew well what,、uh, where the key was. The family didn't normally go into the、uh, servant room, which means that. <laughs> だとそうでしょ食堂にいた兄さんたち4人を一度に襲って殺し合計6人分の遺体をようようとバラ庭園の向こうの倉庫まで運んで悪趣味な化粧と落書きを施しているこれだけのことを単独犯で行えるはずもないでしょう。It might not have been if a single person spent enough time on it, but that would have taken ages. It was probably best to think that a significant number of people had been part of it. Or Ava is just、uh, foisting suspicion off herself. Here I was saying, like, okay. Don't put suspicion on Ava right away just because I'm not a big fan of her character, but I mean, when she talks about it like that, it does make sense. But it also could be that she's throwing the suspicion off of herself. Maybe her and Hideyoshi are in cahoots with the servants and help them out too. I don't know. <laughs> ニーさんたち4人を安々と殺した相手なのよ。今この部屋に残っていて、まともに戦えそうな人間は、うちの家族の3人にせいぜいバトラ君で4人ってところ。状況は昨晩と何も変わらない。つまり、犯人にとって残
The Ishiromiya family was currently right in the middle of discussing how to distribute the inheritance if Grandfather died. If, the, uh, if this followed the formulaic plot used to death by many classic mystery novels, it would definitely be a crime by someone with ties to the Ushiromiya family and who was entangled in the inheritance problem. Auntie had probably also read a few books in that genre. Her theory did have a few one-sided conclusions to it, but it was a run-of-the-mill. It was so run-of-the-mill that anyone would surely hit upon it. I think anyone would have suspected the servants, even if their logic was different, especially the talk revolving around the key to the shutter. That was enough to make it easy to suspect strongly that one of the servants was involved in the case. It's like he's in on it too. He's like, this seems too simple. I dodged the question by joking, but I couldn't wipe out the sense of unease I felt inside me. Because the reasoning we had arrived at was altogether too simple. Reasoning that anyone could arrive at. And I just couldn't accept that. If I tried flipping over the chessboard like I learned from Kyrie-san, that was exactly why it was impossible for the servants to be the culprit. If the servants really had been the culprits, they wouldn't have hidden the bodies in a place that was tied to themselves. Certainly not the Rose Garden storehouse of all places whose key they themselves controlled. The police would probably immediately pursue whoever had been in control of the key. That would, create, uh, that would create a danger for exposure. If we were to assume that they were the culprits, they had no reason to carry the bodies into the storehouse. Do they expect us to think that, and so put them in the storehouse deliberately? No, that definitely didn't make sense. When the police came and ins uh, come and inspect the site, all kinds of things will probably become clear. No matter how deeply careful the culprits were in carrying out the murder, some kind of traces would definitely be found. So in summary, they have everything to lose and nothing to gain. If you think about it this way and look at the game from the culprit side, it feels like there's no point in advertising the location of the corpses. If the bodies were found, a report would be sent to the police. The remaining people would become more cautious. They could start looking for who was responsible. Anyway, none of these things would make the culprits feel any more comfortable. Just like the word, <laughs> just like the words of the main character's mother in a novel I read recently called Higurashi no Nakukurodi. Oh my god, I wasn't expecting that blatant of a reference. That's amazing. A mystery story has four parts: introduction, development, turn, and conclusion. And so, to commit the perfect crime, it's essential to eliminate the introduction. Good to know that Higurashi was. I mean, I know it's just a story, but Higurashi was a story. It was a fictional thing that takes place in a fictional world, but this is the real world, but then maybe the sequel after Umineko will be the characters of that show, or that, um, you know, story, and they're reading like, oh, it's like a mystery uh, I read recently called Umineko. <laughs> right now, no one knew where Grandfather was. We didn't know whether he had already become a victim or if he was one of the culprits, but the state of confusion had to be beneficial to whoever did this. By blatantly advertising the bodies to us, and declaring, hey, there's a murder case going on, the culprit had absolutely nothing to gain. Right, that was where we could flip over the chessboard. So this blatant advertisement of the bodies was itself the culprit's goal. So it may be well to that, to the culprit, having the six corpses be present there meant more than the deaths themselves. In other words, the culprit wanted to display these murders. To who? To us. It was a message. The culprit was trying to shove something in our faces. I didn't know what that could be. At the current time, none of us could grasp anything from this vulgar mass murder except Malice. Talk to Maria, see if she's got anything in her book about this specific emblem. Malice towards everyone, perhaps. Each one of the survivors had some kind of connection to one of the six who had been killed. Uncle Krause's death brought sorrow to Jessica's family. The deaths of Dad and Kyrie's son brought sorrow to me. Goda brought sorrow to our stomachs who will never taste his food again. <laughs> While Auntie Rose's death brought sorrow to Maria, goda sons death probably dealt a shock to his fellow servants. And Shannon Chan's death brought grief to George Aniki who had proposed to her, and to Kenan Kun who had loved her like an older sister. Everyone now on this island had received an equal amount of sadness. 
Auntie Ava had claimed that the servants were definitely in cahoots. But then how could you explain the deaths of Godasan and Shanachan? And by this argument, the grief caused by the six deaths hit everyone but Auntie Ava and Uncle Hideyoshi. Oh ho ho, he's suspecting them like I am. It was very possible to doubt Auntie Ava herself, who was acting like she was outside of the net of suspicion, and who might have been trying to point that suspicion at the servants. In the first place, she had managed to avoid suspicion and place it on the servants with that argument about the key to the shutter. But if you looked at it from a perspective of motive, about who would gain something from the murders, Auntie Ava's name floated to the top of the list. Yeah, you think about it. Literally, there's nobody uh, in line to be able to collect the inheritance, except for her, Natsui. Because Krauss is gone, she probably doesn't have any say in it. Damn, yeah, yeah. She gets all the money. And the power. What? <笑>いやだな。内緒に捨ててくださいよ。あんなことやこんなことで頭をいっぱいにしてたなんて。私がこの殺人で一番得をする。どうせ疑われるだろうから、先に自己申告しておくわ。I had tried to dodge this conversation by joking around, but it looked like it hadn't worked.遺産は兄弟の数で分割する。でも今や4兄弟は私一人。後ろ宮家の全財産は全て私のものになるの。秀吉おじさんが聞いたら予算買えば謝礼にならんって。ごめんね。どう取り繕ったってどうせ疑われるだろうからふざけただけよ。だからこの殺人は私の立場から見れば
That's why murderers throughout history have tried to ensure their motive will not be found out, by skillfully complicating the incidents. I don't know. I don't know. Every time I flip over the chessboard, it keeps flipping from front to back and back to front. Were my thoughts closing in on the truth? Or... Auntie Ava didn't want to talk any more than that, so I headed to the window, folding my arms so that I could cool my head a little. As I looked over the parlor, I saw George Eniki and the others gathered, talking. It looked like they were talking about the magic circle that had been painted on the shutter. As Uncle Hideyoshi thought back to that time, he started drawing the shape in the margins of Maria's notebook. Yes, Maria is second only to Grandfather in knowledge of the occult, so she might understand what it meant. Finally, they're talking to Maria about it, and they're taking her seriously. Hmm. <laughs> あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あと、あ
Oh my god! And then she laughed. An eerie, jarring laugh. Even though I was looking at it right in front of my eyes, I really didn't want to accept it as real. Oh my god! Oh, 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 oh. It just got worse! It just got worse and worse and worse! <laughs> oh, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> well, everyone was scared out of their wits. Maria alone kept on cackling happily. Lock this girl away in a room. We cannot let her run around unsupervised. After a while, that laugh suddenly and abruptly cut off. But her expression was still like someone completely different from Maria. Maria stole the writing materials from the stunned Hideyoshi's hand. She then started drawing another magic circle effortlessly, right next to the one that Hideyoshi had drawn. Oh, I hate it. Oh, it's like when Rika switched from her girly little voice to more serious. Like, there's something in her voice that's slightly different. Maria, Jessica tried to smooth things over by praising Maria. Maybe she wants to make sure this was still the Maria who everyone knew so well. Or she wants to get on her good side so she doesn't get murdered. <laughs> but Maria didn't give her any particular response. Maria started fluently writing unfamiliar characters in the corners of the shape. At this sight, the eyes of Uncle Hideyoshi and Dr. Nanjo instantly began to widen. I guess when I talked about Rika's voice changing, the more apt thing to say would be when Hanyu's voice changed from her cute little ow 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 to being all serious because this is literally Hanyu's voice actress. Ariel, Seraph, Tarshis, Kerub. Katteru? Even if you are unable to correctly write what you have seen, if you are once again shown something identical, it isn't difficult to state that the two are the same. Asked Bar Maria whether they matched, Uncle Hideyoshi and Dr. Nanjo nodded over and over again. At some point, they're gonna have to suspect Mar maybe Maria, if not, had something to do with the murders, at least. She was the one who drew those, uh, you know, the circles. <laughs> Maria began jotting down Hebrew all over the circumference. Acting as though knowing this was only common sense, Maria left. I kind of miss the ooh, ooh after the kehehehe, because it's creepy as fuck. For a while, everyone, including me, was at a loss for words. After some moments, George Aniki returned to his senses and slowly managed to speak. すごいね。驚いたよ。それでこの魔法人にはどんな意味があるんだい？太陽の力を借りる魔法人だよ。黄金で描き、五分にして身につけたるものはいかなる牢獄であろうとも束縛から逃れ、自由を得られる力を授け
どういう意味だい魔法人のために6人がいるってのは一体マリアリフトアップインデックスフィンガーをワイグルズ・オフシューズ・メイクファンそれは演習部に書いてるよ読めないかな詩編第116編16節と17節読んであげるよ主は私の枷を解かれました私はあなたに感謝の生贄にえを捧げ主の皆を呼ぶでしょうねっねって何を言ってるのかさっぱりだぜ生贄にえだってのか If the part that Mario had just read aloud was the vital part of the magic circle then it was saying the benefit of this magic circle required sacrifices to be offered in exchange So inside the storehouse where the magic circle had been drawn, the sacrifices had been offered. It looked like everyone else had slowly arrived at the same conclusion. Some were shocked, others spat out, they're insane as they punched their knees. This was starting to become a seriously disturbing story. And we couldn't escape it, nor understand it. Is it gonna click for them that the deaths aren't done yet? Because if they're following the epitaph, the whole thing about like on this night, this many people die on this night. This many people die, from what I remember correctly. I don't care what kind of magic circles or curses other people believe in. They're right, and I won't pick a fight with them. Oh. So, the whole thing about, like, they'll all be revived at the end, is that going to be a thing, like, if this goes through and everybody's revived? Because I think I mentioned before about how is each chapter, is it going to be its own self contained story, like Higurashi? Where people, different people die in different ways, or is this gonna be one continuous story? I don't know. But do they really kill dad and the rest of sacrifices for some bullshit like that? But if, the, if at the end everyone is alive anyway, I'm okay with that because,、uh, you know, for better or for worse, like there's some characters I like more than others, but I don't want them to die. I just couldn't stand that feeling. Especially because there was so little I knew about a lot of the characters. Like we just started to learn about them and then almost half of them got wiped out. I'm, I'd still rather be disgusted over all that talk about the inheritance. As I started getting pissed off with the feeling between anger and sadness, I broke from the circle everyone was in and returned once again to the window. Something had gone insane since yesterday. That letter from the witch, Beatrice, that Mario had read aloud at last night's dinner. I feel like ever since that point, we. You know, this whole mansion, this whole island has begun to be drawn into some kind of peculiar world. That's right. When I think back on it, that letter was an invitation from the witch. The ruler of the nighttime island has invited us inhabitants of the day into another world. But the phone and the radio interrupted, and the island shut off by the typhoon. You could now call it another world cut off from the real one. Yes, on this island right now, it is perfectly normal for witches to send letters and for sacrifices to be offered to magic circles. Hell, that one girl's gonna be so happy she missed this trip. <laughs> so, what will happen next? Will some weird people wearing goat masks start doing the Bon Festival dance or something? No, it's no good, it's no good. I don't get it. The inside of my head's all screwed up, and I don't even know what to think. Anger, sadness. The opposing emotions are all swirled up together, and they started to suck me in. Unable to resist, I could do nothing but cover my eyes with my hands and entrust my mind and body to the spiral swallowing. What if that one. What if that sibling. What if the. What if that girl who had to miss this, what if she snuck onto the island and was behind all of this? As I started losing heart, I began to recall a distant memory. It was from when I was very young. I had unfortunately seen a scary occult movie on TV. For a while, I hadn't even been able to go to the bathroom by myself. That old bastard had given an exaggerated laugh and said this. Nah, b a t r a どうして悪魔だのオカルトだのってのをわざわざこうして映画にすると思うねえからだよそんな滑稽なもんは地球のどこにもねえのさねえからわざわざ見たくて作るんだよだから俺はオカルト映画なんてちゃんちゃらおかしくて笑っちまうってんだ俺に言わせりゃ悪魔やら妖怪やらより今年度の収支報告や機嫌を悪くした女房の方が一さらに言うぜ俺に言わせりゃな怖がるってのは心と生活にゆとりのある連中の娯楽的感情なのさ暇で暇でしょうがないから連中は変わった感情で心を遊ばせたくて悪魔だの
オカルトだのって文化を作り出したんだよ。<笑> feels like a little bit of a shot at the person who is playing this because I mean these, ga- these games aren't scary but they definitely delve into you know some horror aspects so it's almost like hey people who play scary games and watch scary things you have too much free time and too much of an empty brain that you need to occupy it by creating emotions for yourself that are you know outside of like what you normally experience seriously why have I, why have I been acting so damn thick headed I was totally taken in Ooh. What's this music? I just need to take a second to listen to this. It's kind of giving me Mortal Kombat theme song vibes, and I don't know why, I love, but I'm digging it. To hell with that shit. This is the human world. As if I give a crap about witches, demons, magic circles, and sacrifices. Music in this game, like Higurashi is good music. This music, I like it too. The human who killed dad and everyone else is still on this island. That's all there is, right? Next to start speaking to my heart was Kurie-san. Chess and Shogi are the beginning of the beginning. If you get to the end of the stage, the stage will be limited. So, I'm the one who is limited. Or, I'm the one who is limited. At that time, the hand is limited to be limited. And I don't know, it's like also the music at times, and also the way they talk about like when your back is against the wall and you're uh, Phoenix Wright vibes, it's given me too. Like, Kyrie, like, I don't know why, she gives me Phoenix Wright vibes and I dig it. And that's all the more reason I'm bummed out she's gone, because she seemed like she could have been an interesting character that we barely know about. With all my strength, I slapped my face with both hands. Now my eyes were truly open. When you don't understand anything and you're completely cornered just like I am now, isn't that the first time to flip over the chessboard? With us put on the defensive, we couldn't even guess at the culprit scheme. If you flipped it over and looked at it the other way, just how far could you see? First of all, the time the murders were committed by the culprit, they knew that the island was cut off by the typhoon. So they should have understood that even if they carried out the murders, they wouldn't be able to get away until the next morning. In short, the culprit had begun without securing a way to escape. Furthermore, the bastard had even tossed the corpses into the storehouse, while doing the courtesy of telling us they are here with that weird graffiti. In other words, since we would probably find the corpses sooner or later, they wanted to show us them. If we had all been dim, and had noticed the storage shed, perhaps the culprit's goal would not have been achieved. Heh, <laughs> if you think about it that way, that murdering maniac, since this morning he must have been watching our every move with bated breath. After all, if we hadn't been so kind as to discover what was in the storehouse, all that hard work and preparation that they had done last night would have just gone poof. What did the culprit want to make us feel by showing us the corpses in the storehouse? All six of the bodies had their faces noticeably destroyed. A grudge? A warning? The defacement of the bodies had occurred after death. So it hadn't been the means by which the culprit had murdered. It didn't mean anything to those who had been killed. And meaning to those who discovered it. The culprit wanted to show us them to us. Look at how brutally I killed them. Ha! Huh. After thinking this way, I really want to tell that asshole to stop taking me so lightly. Who would dance to that tune? If I'm told, please be scared. I'm not just gonna say, really? Sure thing. When someone tells the great Ushiromiya battler, entrance this way, I'm the kind of guy you'll start wanting to sneak in through the window. The next thing that has me concerned was the attempt at a magic circle on the shutter. It was a genuine magic circle, declared authentic by even Maria, who would demonstrate that her knowledge of the occult rivaled grandfathers. They must have drawn that thing in pitch black darkness while holding an umbrella in one hand, and it must have taken them a lot of time. That's a formidable amount of hard work and attention to detail. What purpose would have been worth all that effort? If something related to the occult happened at this mansion, most likely, we would all atom- automatically suspect the involvement of Grandfather. Did they want to make us think Grandfather was involved? But if that was all they wanted, they could have just drawn any old scribble that looked like a magic circle. It wasn't like any of us amateurs could tell the difference between genuine and fake. 
However, this magic circle was genuine. And furthermore, it had even been written in Hebrew. So this magic circle had a message that could only be understood by someone with knowledge of the occult. Messages are a form of communication. You send them and hope for a reaction from the other party. Reaction. For some reason, we couldn't find Grandfather now. I don't know how Grandfather could have managed to see the magic circle on the shutter, but had he chosen to hide himself in reaction to that sight? No. Was it a trap to make us suspect Grandfather's involvement? You could read it either way. Damn, that's annoying. What kind of reaction was the culprit hoping to get out of us by showing this Im Im uh, imitation of the occult? Somehow, that felt like the culprit's weak point. A section of Beatrice's letter that Mari had read aloud during last night's dinner sprang back into my mind. A part that said, I ask that you enjoy your battle of wits. Sounds like fun. This is a battle of wits between us and the witch. Which will be first, us being swallowed up by your occult games? Or me revealing you for who you are? There's a whole day until the Typhoon passes. Why not enjoy ourselves? Alright, I like this. I finally noticed that the inside of the parlor had gone quiet again. Everyone had sunk into their favorite sofas, some deep in thought, some irritated, some depressed. Maria was once again enjoying the television, as if she had never left it. It looked like she found the commercials more fun than the boring program, and she happily yelled, Ooh, ooh, and giggled. I stared at each person's appearance in turn. If there isn't a 19th person, the culprit must be in this room. Or the servants. <laughs> you can't count discount the servants. Right now, Aunt Natsui was searching the mansion with the servants, though, wasn't she? Then it shouldn't be in this room. In this mansion is what we should say. After all, there was also the possibility that Aunt Natsui was behind this. And we still couldn't deny that one of the servants could be the killer. Anyone could be the bad guy. Still, Aunt Natsui and the rest sure are slow. Of course, it's not a small mansion, but isn't this taking a little too long just to walk around checking the windows and doors? If they're dead too, I'm gonna lose my fucking mind! <laughs> like, what? <laughs> just as I thought... Uh, just as I thought that Aunt Natsui and the rest returned. Okay, good. Not one of them was missing. But our relief was short-lived. Oh, what's this? Everyone looked at Aunt Natsui, shocked. <coughs> what is it? What is it? What is it? The talk I'd hand with Auntie Ava started to creep back into my mind. The possibility that the culprits had enough in numbers. Oh, is he saying that she is in cahoots with the servants? Or weapons to kill all of those six at once? Oh, shit! What the fuck? God damn it! Because that thing in Aunt Natsui's hand was a rifle. At a glance, its silhouette looked a lot like a hunting gun. But it was unusually short, and kind of looked like a kid-sized gun. However, it had a thickness to it which revealed this was definitely not some kid's toy. それは金蔵さんの銃ですな。ご存知でしたか。そうです。お父様の古いコレクションの中にあったことを思い出し、探し出してきました。ふう。すっげえ。夏山さん、それ本物なんですか？え、本物です。実弾を発砲できますよ。
お父さんも渋いな親方様がだいぶ昔にご覧の通り実銃ですのでどうかこの件はご内密にお願いいたします手に入れられたばかりの頃は大層気に入られておりまして打つより薬莢を出す動作が面白いらしくて裏の森でいろいろとかっこつけて遊んでおられたもんですよ<笑>しかし物騒ねそんなものまで持ち出しちゃうのかしら万が一に備えてです族はおそらく一人ではないでしょうしかも主人たちを6人も殺した恐ろしい相手です私には主人に代わって皆さんを明日まで守る義務がありますので As, uh, as Natsumi san said this, she slumped down into one of the sofas and took a deep breath. As well as checking the doors and windows, she had also been trying to find grandfather. Since grandfather was not with her, apparently his whereabouts were still unknown. Yashiki nai no tojimari wa genjiu ni kakunin shite kimashita. Desu ga, man ga ichi to yu koto mo arimasu. Minna, narubeku koko ni ishou ni ita hou ga ii desu. It's nice to see Natsui take charge where before she was like so meek and like. You know, sickly, and now she's like stepping up. I'm liking her more and more. So, ne, koko ni zain ga atsumatte, sogo kanshi o shite iru hou ga anshin da wa. Sore wa dou yu imi desu ka, Eba san? Betsu ni? Natsuhine san no iken ni sansei shita dake yo? There was a dangerous atmosphere between the two of them. If he thought about who stood to gain the most from the inheritance problem standpoint, Auntie Eva was the obvious answer. However, there was no proof that Aunt Natsumi was innocent. Now, if you view Be、uh, Beatrice's letter as grandfather's elaborate prank, then think of this incident as just an extension of that. There was more than enough evidence to doubt even grandfather. Aunt Natsumi thought the criminal was on the outside, but Auntie Eva thought the criminal was on the inside. In short, it was the question of whether, it was an,、uh, whether or not a 19th person exists. It was the doubt that had been repeatedly endlessly. It was the doubt that had been repeated endlessly since last night's dinner, with a letter from the witch who called herself Beatrice. So, was the culprit among us or not? And did the witch Beatrice exist or not? If you assumed that something as stupid as a witch couldn't exist, it was the same as saying that one of these relatives here who shared a common bloodline was the culprit. If he didn't like that, it would be much more comfortable to simply accept the fairy tale about the witch. Did a witch do it? Draw that weird magic circle and sacrifice those people? If I could only accept that rubbish, I wouldn't be able I would be able to completely trust everyone in this room. However, damn common sense got in the way. It kept repeating that witches don't exist. In that case, the culprit was among us. In the middle of the seemingly in the middle of the seemingly endless rain, None of us could break our silence. Crack! I'm starting to predict them now. Alright, l this is exciting. Lunch had ended, and the servants had removed the tableware and were now in the kitchen. The wind and rain had neither weakened nor strengthened, and the island remained cut off from the outside world. It seemed that at first Natsui had planned not to let anyone set one foot outside the room, but when it came time to prepare lunch, she finally realized that this was impossible. However, in order to avoid having anyone alone in the kitchen, she told the three servants to go together. Because of that, the servants were the first ones given the right to leave the stuffy parlor, which had been packed with eleven people. Since breakfast had immediately followed that terrible incident, And many of them hadn't eaten much. Everyone tore to their lunches in silence. Watashi ga arai masu kara, Genji san to Kanon kun wa skoshi yasun de ite kudasai na. Nani ka nomi masu? Watashi wa kekko. Kanon wa? Boku mo kekko desu. O futari tomo sojou kara taihen datta desho? Maitte shimau no mo shikata nai koto desu yo. The only sound was that of Kumasawa washing the dishes, which resounded throughout the kitchen. Genji and Kanan sat in, some,、uh, sat in some chairs a short distance away, their eyes lightly closed. Just as Kumasawa had said, those two had probably built up a great deal of fatigue. 
But that didn't mean they could let it show in front of their relatives. Avoiding that was one of their virtues. After the silence had continued for some time, Kenan opened his mouth and muttered, Wait, 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 wait. Wasn't that something? Hold up. Hold up. What was that? Uh, okay. Don't worry, everyone will- Is there something somebody had said about- It was just bad luck. Uh, she was chosen by the demon's roulette. That's all there is to it. Oh, I thought there was something- I thought one of these had literally said it was just bad luck, but something to that extent. But I was like, ooh, that thing Genji said, just kind of like, it probably it probably is just nothing. It's just something innocuous that he said, but I immediately was like, that sounds familiar. <laughs> they both fell silent once again. Kenan's expression was filled with grief. <laughs> And then what is it Kenji was saying about Beatrice? I just want to see your smile one more time. Kuwasawa spoke with her back facing them. Kuwasawa hadn't seen Shannon's corpse, so she had no trouble mentioning Shannon's face. When Kenan heard those words, it reminded him again how only half of Shannon's face had been left, and his grieving expression twisted even further. わ、あるいは他の誰かだったのかもしれない。全ては運命だ。現地様、奥様の部屋の扉に血のような跡がついていたとおっしゃっていましたね。シャッターに書かれていたのと同じもので。うん。君の悪い跡だった。まるで血の
He's like, if you don't let me get on this conversation, I'll tell Natsui what you said. <笑>水でも飲ませてもらおうかと思ったら面白そうな話が聞こえてきたんでよ。頭なんか下げなくていいぜ。今の話の続きをお聞かせてくれよ。今のは別に。ちょいと前から話は聞かせてもらってるんだ
Kenan could have once again dropped his gaze, avoiding my eyes. I urged him on chokingly. However, it looked like Kenan was still unsure as to whether he should speak or not. Then Kumasawa Bachan whispered. <laughs> Well, and now it's going into, okay, so I guess she is some sort of, like, supernatural being. But she has no body, but maybe... Maybe she went into Maria because Maria was like a true believer and she used her as she's using her body. Beatrice <laughs> Kagayak me think someone who is not battler, someone who doesn't know that rule, will see the butterflies and go after them and die as a result. おい、マジかよ。あんたら本気でそんな話をしているのかよ。バトラ様。すでにベアトリーチ様がお越しになっておられます。そのようなお言葉はよろしくないかと思われます。I was going to say I could see Kuwasawa being the type to joke Genji or not Genji, sorry. Um Kenan maybe, but not Genji. ベアトリーチ様は ご自身を冒涜される方を好みません。その存在を疑えば必ずや不幸が降りかかるでしょう。バトラさん、気持ちの悪いお話とお思いでしょう。バトラさん、気持ちの悪いお話とお思いでしょう。バトラさん、気持
錬金術を極め賢者の石を生み出し莫大な黄金を生み出すことができるおじいさまは彼女と契約することで後宮家に莫大な富を築いたんだよ昨日私がペアトリーチェの手紙を読んだでしょあれは本当なんだよまバトラに信じろと言っても無理な話だろうけど六感が生まれつきさっぱりみたいだからね<笑>な,なんだよそれ魔女悪魔そんなの誰に聞いたんだよ<笑>ペアトリーチャ本人に聞いたんだよ<笑>マリアキャプトゥインダーのプラスのラフ。She heard it from the witch in the portrait adorning the entrance hall. Maria kept on laughing in that weird voice, as though this was nothing more or less than the truth. Maria, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the money. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get the Just then, Maria's laugh suddenly stopped. Batra, Mada wa kan nai? Beatrice ga iru no ga. Iru te? Toko ni san? Dakara, Beatrice ga koko ni iru no ga. That's right. Now that I think about it, I've been feeling for some time now that the others haven't been looking in quite the right direction. Ooh. I figured that everyone had just been gazing into the distance, but that wasn't the case. The four here, Genji san, Kanan kun, Kumasawa san, and Maria. Everyone except me was looking at a spot right behind me. Oh shit. Holding my breath tightly, I slowly looked over my shoulder. Of course, there wasn't anyone there. I'd known that the whole time. However, everyone in the room except me was focusing on that point as if there was someone there. Beatrice was a great man. でも波長の合う人間にしか自分の姿を見せられないし話しかけられないだからねそれがとても悲しいんだよだからバトラみたいな生まれつき魔法のセンスもかけらのない人に存在を否定されるのがものすごく嫌いなんだよバトラは幸運だよ昨日私にお話しさせてよかったね<笑>それを身につけていなかったら今頃ベアトリーチェのどんな呪いが身に及んでいたか分かったものじゃない、まあ、ジェスカ doesn't have hers and、uh, ジェスカ doesn't seem to believe either so this could be bad 本当に幸運なんだよバトラは I wonder if she's gonna say it's too bad about Jessica <笑><笑>ああ、あのサソリのキーホルダーかよあれって安っぽい景品か何かだと思ってたんだがちとはご利益あったってことなのか<笑>それがなかったら今頃バトラがあの倉庫の中で顔面を砕かれて生贄にされていたんだよ<笑>幸運だったよバトラは<笑>そうかあれがなかったら。俺は今頃殺されてたってのかなんでバトラはベアトリーチェを信じないのいるのに今そこにほら<笑>ね信じる気になったでしょ信じなよマリアにお守りをもらったことを感謝しながらあれがなければバトラは今頃倉庫の中代わりに誰か一人が助かっていたかもしれないね<笑> Right then, I burst into laughter. Playing witches had been pretty fun up until a second ago, but unfortunately, that last one didn't quite hit the mark. Oh no. じゃあ全然ダメだぜ、マリア。ってことなら悪いがああ全然ダメだ。When Maria saw me suddenly start laughing, she stopped. Even though she didn't understand what I was laughing at, she realized it wouldn't be pleasant for her. お前が傷つくだろうと思ったから
<笑>俺黙ってたよ。俺ポケットに入れたつもりだったんだけどよ。どっかに落っことしちまったんだぜ。だから俺が今この瞬間に無事なのは、お守りのおかげでもねえし。なら悪いが、俺は自分の目で見